Good morning, you guys. I'm excited about this video and I hope you are too. We're talking today about the value proposition of a Robinson helicopter. Now, I know a lot of you have a lot of questions on this. Um, if you're interested in, or in the, the ballpark of trying to own a helicopter, uh, what type of helicopter out there is the right one to own? And then uh, just understanding a little bit about the, the costs involved and so forth. So the part of uh, that I'm gonna be focusing on in this video specifically is the actual purchase cost of the aircraft. I'm not going to be talking about the maintenance and the um, overhauls and all those kind of things um, and the hourly operating cost. That'll be in, in a different video, but I'm specifically talking about uh, which helicopter do you buy and then when you're looking, you, you've honed down to a specific helicopter, um, how do I choose what helicopter is a good price and what's not? In helicopters in general, in the helicopter industry, there is rarely, um, there's exceptions to that, but there's rarely um, something that you would consider to be an incredible deal. Like, wow, this helicopter is really cheap. Um, that doesn't really happen. There are, of course, um, situations where somebody is really financially strapped and they really need to drop a helicopter and so forth, but that typically doesn't happen. And so uh, what you're seeing when you see a full variety of prices is there's a reason behind that. Now. A standard typical helicopter um, has a component life on every component of that helicopter, okay? So when you buy it brand new with zero hours on it, every component listed on that helicopter has some sort of a life form to it. Um, some things are on condition, some things are based on a specific amount of hours, okay? Now, as, those, as, the, as the aircraft flies, uh, it has a certain amount of depreciation, okay? So the amount of hours on those components will depreci depreciate that aircraft that certain amount, okay? Now, some helicopters have a calendar life item as well. So a certain component might have a calendar life on it, or the entire aircraft might have a calendar life, meaning after 12 years or a certain amount of years, 15 years or whatever, um, that aircraft in total or just a, a certain component on it will be now have to be scrapped and, and thrown away and you'll have to replace it. So depending on the price point of that component, it could either be a lot of money or a little bit of money. Like, so for example, in a Cabri, um, there's virtually no life limit components on it. Most of them are, are on condition, but one that is a calendar life item is the fuel bladder. So the actual bladder that goes inside the fuel tank compartment. And, and that's a 15 year life on that one. That's a pretty low ticket item. So um, you're in, in, when you're thinking about purchase price and, and so forth, that's actually a very small amount of money that you would be looking at. You wouldn't even really consider it, okay? Now, the helicopter that I'm focusing in on today is the Robinson R44. We could talk about all the different types, but this is one, that we're going to focus on in this video specifically. Okay, now the Robinson model is a very interesting model. They've done different things, things differently than the rest of the world. They've done it for a couple of reasons. Um, what they've created is a 12 year or 2200 hour life cycle on the helicopter. Okay, I'm going to show you that on a graph in a second here, but um, what they've done, the reason they've done this is they've been able to now create a helicopter where, uh, I'm not gonna call it a throwaway helicopter, but a helicopter that has a lower amount of hours on the total components of the aircraft, but what it does is it keeps all the, it keeps the cycle of all the components the same, okay? The reason they've done that is very clever, two reasons. One is they wanted to make ownership for a private person, possibly yourself, as simple and easy as possible. They just want you to be able to look at your, your helicopter, look at the amount of hours on it, and say, hey, it has 1,200 hours on it, it's half life until it needs to be overhauled. Whereas, when you get into a more complex helicopter, let's, uh, let's call it a, a Bell 206 Jet Ranger, an A-Star, or something like this, it has a whole list of components, and they're all getting replaced at different amounts of time, so you have to have this really in-depth spreadsheet to be able to tell you, hey, this component is coming due in 300 hours, this one's 100, 780 hours, this one's one's 1200 hours, this one's coming due in 200 hours, and so it's a lot more work. Typically, you would need an engineer um, to be able to track all that for you, and it's, it's more complex, okay? Robinson wanted to make things simple because simple sells, and as you can see, if you've done any research on helicopters, the Robinson helicopter is the number one sold helicopter in the world. That's reason number one that they did it. The other reason is because they're business people, they want to make a lot of money, and so they've decided, you know what, we're going to have a system where every 2200 hours or 12 years, we're going to have to um, have our customer come back to us or to a, a certified um, service center, overhaul center, and, and completely overhaul their aircraft, which means that they have to buy this whole 
parts kit from us and we basically get to sell them essentially a new helicopter um, every 2200 hours or 12 years. Very clever thinking on their behalf. Um, kind of annoying in some instances because there's certain things that I don't necessarily know that they need to have that calendar life, but they've tested and they've decided that it does. Okay, so here's how it works. We're gonna take a look at the spreadsheet. Um, so you guys can see the spreadsheet on the screen here, and I've just color coded it um, a little bit to make it stand out a little bit more. But the way that I've done this, okay, I'm just gonna kind of explain what I've done here, is on the left side, I've got years one to 12, okay? Now, um, as I talked about already, this helicopter has a 12 year life, okay? Let's talk about that in a sec. On the right hand column here, we've got hours, zero to 2200 hours, okay? This helicopter becomes a pumpkin after either one of these two things, okay? So if you bought the aircraft brand new and you never flew it a single hour in, in its life and you kept it in your hangar and after 12 years, that helicopter is a pumpkin, it needs to go in for a major overhaul, okay? There is a slight difference in cost between a 12-year overhaul and a 2,200-hour overhaul, um, but we're not gonna get into that today. That's, some, that's, that's for a different video, okay? Uh, it is a slight cost difference, but it's not dramatic, okay? Now, um, in the middle, what I've done is, these are, these are approximations, okay? But what I've done is, I'm giving you a US dollar price. This is all in US dollars because all aircrafts are bought and sold in US dollars, okay? No matter where you are in the world. And so the top price here, the 530,000, is about what you would spend on an average Robinson R44, brand new from the factory right now, okay? That would be considered um, all parts and everything included, or all, all, um, all features and so forth included. Now, of course, that dollar figure can go down a little bit, but not very much, and it can go up a fair bit depending on how um, dramatic you wanna get on the instrumentation and so forth of the aircraft. Um, this is one that was just sort of standard equipped with um, air conditioning and just the standard avionics and so forth, um, leather seats and th those types of things. But if you wanted to get a, a full glass cockpit and pop out floats and uh, a whole bunch of other features, then of course that price point can go up. So for now, we're just talking about um, a standard, uh, really nice R44 helicopter from the factory. You're gonna walk out the door at about 530,000, okay? The bottom number down here, um, and this again is a little bit up for discretion, but this is what I found in, in my experience, is a timed out helicopter that's either at 12 years or 2200 hours, or let's say both at the same time, is worth about $100,000. Now again, um, if you wanna just drop it tomorrow to anybody that you can, probably more like $90,000. If you have a little bit of time to, to wait around and sell it and so forth, you might be able to get 120, 130, depending on the condition of the aircraft. But let's just call it 100 to be on the safe side, okay? Um, that's what the aircraft's worth when it's done, when it's timed out, okay? Now at the bottom here, um, I've just basically put in this, uh, this guy here as an overhaul cost of about uh, $290,000, okay? That's, um, that's about the going price. Now if you look on Robinson's website, they actually show you a number that's a bit lower than that. They're quoting about $230,000 for an overhaul. Uh, we just are currently have ours in the factory right now. Uh, another friend of ours has theirs in the factory. Um, you're looking at about 290,000 to be on the realistic side, okay? Because um, something that is, you know, six, seven, eight years old and 2,200 hours is old enough that there's probably some things on it that need to be upgraded. Um, if you don't have the bladder tanks, you have the fuel bladder tanks, those need to be upgraded and so on and so forth. So there's a few things that will bump it up in that range, okay? Um, but we're not gonna get into that today. We're just gonna be talking about its first life before you get um, overhauling again. Okay, so what this allows us to do here is we, we need to do a little extrapolation if we want to make things as, as accurate as possible. What we can do though, is we can drop down to any number in one of these columns and we can say, okay, uh, an uh, aircraft that is six years old needs to have a thousand hours on it for you to be able to be using the maximum um, utility of that aircraft. So if you want to get the, the most bang for your buck, you need to be flying that aircraft around 200 hours per year, okay? If you fly it more, great, that's no problem. If you fly it less, you're leaving money on the table, which means when you get to your 12 years, if you haven't flown off your 2200 hours, there's, there's unused value, there's unused potential revenue or value in that aircraft that you haven't actually used, okay? That's unfortunate because um, these things are a lot of money, and so if there's unused uh, revenue on the table, 
that's never a great thing. If you're a private owner and you're never gonna get revenue from it anyways, there's still unused value. Nobody likes to use, to lose value on something or uh, miss out on potential value, okay? So that's the way you need to look at it. So an aircraft that has six years on it or a thousand hours should be worth somewhere in the ballpark of $334,000, okay? Now, this is where the extrapolation comes in because if it's six years old but it only has 400 hours on it, you can kind of look at these two numbers and you can say, okay, well, a 400 hour aircraft is about $450,000 worth, um, but they would have to be more like three years old. So you need to ask yourself a question. We're gonna pop over here. Let me move this guy over and we're gonna pop over to controller. Now, um, just on a side note, um, controller.com, this is not sponsored by any means. Um, controller.com is kind of the go-to website um, there's others out there, but this is the go-to website to find aircrafts for sale of all types. Airplanes, helicopters, piston, turbine, um, doesn't matter. So I'm just going to uh, jump on here and I, I've just kind of loaded up the page here with the Robinson R44 and we're just going to look at a couple examples and we're going to try and evaluate whether we think that the price point that they're trying to sell these aircraft at is accurate, if it's, um, if it's a good price or not. Okay, so let's have a look at this first one. Um, it's a 2015, so it's five years old and it's got 160 hours on it. Okay, let's jump over here. Um, five years old, uh, sorry, yeah, 15, so five years old. It should be at 800 hours if they were using the appropriate amount of hours, and it should be worth around $375,000, okay? They're trying to sell it, hey, look at this, $375,000, um, a couple thousand off of what the spreadsheet says. Now, this is interesting. You, this is where you need to ask yourself, okay, what kind of person am I? What's my plan for this aircraft? Am I gonna own it privately and plan to only fly it 100 hours a year or so, something like that? Or am I gonna own it privately and, and fly it 300 or 400 hours a year? That would be fantastic. Um, or am I gonna own it privately and then maybe lease it back to a flight school or something? That's a fairly common thing to do. And uh, so if you're gonna do something like that, then there's gonna be more hours put on that aircraft. So you need to get a little bit of a business plan together and, and ask yourself, how many hours am I planning to fly on this aircraft? Because somebody, uh, an aircraft like this, you can see the years are getting spent on it. It's already got five years on it. That means it only has seven years left but it's only barely 200 hours total time. That means it has 2,000 hours of usable flying time left, and you're getting it at the value of a um, 800 hour aircraft. So you're, you're right on the price point here for an 800 hour aircraft. Now, if you ask yourself and you say, um, you know what, I'm the type of person that'll fly 100, maybe 150 hours a year, or even you on a good side, maybe 200 hours a year, like what it should be flown, you're gonna leave money on the table at the end of this term. When this aircraft times out for years, um, or years out, calendar life's out, you're gonna leave hours on the table, which means that there's unused potential in that aircraft, okay? Um, but if you, if you say, you know what, I'm gonna lease it back to a school or something like that, or I'm gonna fly it lots myself, I've got a good use for it, um, and I'm gonna fly it lots, then you're actually getting yourself a really good valued aircraft here, okay? Now, let's pop down to the next one, 2018. Uh, so this one is two years old and it's got um, 117 hours on it. Uh, so let's just have a look at that, okay? Two years old, should have 200 hours on it, so it's a little bit behind on its hours and the value should be somewhere in the ballpark of 490,000. Um, and you can look here, 499,000. This one's pretty much right on par. So um, a few hours uh, behind, but the, the price point makes perfect sense on this one, okay? Let's drop down to the next one. Uh, it's a six year uh, old aircraft, so it's a 2014. Uh, looks like they're flying it in, somewhere in the desert. Um, this is in Utah, perfect. And um, it has just about 300 hours on it, 289 hours. So let's have a look. It's six years old. It is way behind. It's like 700 hours behind on its hours. Let's look at the price. It's uh, supposed to be priced at 334,000 approximately if it was on its hours, but they're pricing it at 395,000. This makes sense, okay? If you think about it this way, you bump this up a little bit and you say, okay, a 300 hour aircraft is somewhere up here. So yeah, 475,000 is about where it would be as far as just hours alone, but because of the years, you have to bump it down a bit on the, on the left side here and say, okay, we're gonna go somewhere in the middle here and they're actually pricing it at a very reasonable price point here, okay? Again, 
You're asking yourself the question, am I going to fly it a lot or not, okay? Um, so we're going to, uh, let's have a look at one more. Yeah, sure, let's look at this one right here. It's a 2013, uh, 700 hours on it. Um, sorry, yeah, just about 800 hours on it. It's a seven-year-old aircraft. So I go over here, seven-year-old aircraft um, should have 1,200 hours on it. This is a common theme, you guys. People are not flying these things enough. Um, and so if it had 1,200 hours on it, it'd be worth 295,000. They're pricing it at 365, okay? If I look at 365, that's an aircraft that more like up here. Um, so it should have around 800 hours, which it has, but it has too many years on it, okay? So they're pricing it more at like an 800 hour aircraft, but they've got a lot, of, uh, not a lot, they've got some extra, uh, extra years on it, okay? I would say this one's probably a little overpriced, um, particularly depending on what you're, you're planning to do on it, okay? On average, the private pilots that I see are flying um, anywhere between 150, 100 to 150 hours per year. Now that varies a lot. Unfortunately, uh, we've bought aircraft, fortunately for us, but unfortunately for the owners, uh, we've bought aircrafts that were flying like 10 hours a year, 10 to 15 hours a year. Now you better have a whole lot of extra pocket change in your, in your wallet um, if you're gonna buy a $550,000 aircraft and just keep it sitting in your hangar and fly it 10 hours a year. That to me is a massive waste of money. You're gonna to have to price when you wanna sell that, you're gonna to have to price that aircraft quite a bit lower because the value just isn't there. If it has you know six or seven years on it already and it only has six or five years left uh, before you need an overhaul, you're not gonna be able to charge the value. If the aircraft only has 200 hours on it, you're not gonna be able to charge the value that it's, that it's actually worth, okay? So um, ask yourself this question, which, which camp am I in? Am I gonna fly it a lot? Am I gonna fly it uh, sort of the mean, uh, the 200 hours per year? Am I gonna fly it more or less than that? And then you can jump on controller yourself and you can make sort of these calls yourself of whether you're gonna buy an aircraft that is kind of on the status quo. And if it is, you can use a, a, a spreadsheet like this. You can say, okay, uh, an aircraft that's on the status quo, let's say it was six years old and it had a thousand hours on it, I found one that looks like that, it should be valued at about 334,000, but they're trying to sell it for 300,000. Hey, that's fantastic. I just got myself a $30,000 bonus on this aircraft. Maybe you can negotiate a bit with them, get it another $20,000 down. You've just um, basically bought yourself $50,000 in value there. Um, so this is the way that you're looking at aircrafts when you're looking at purchasing them. Um, like I say, the Robinson, they try and make the business model as simple as possible. Other aircrafts get a lot more complex. Um, so if you're gonna be buying something um, like, let's say, a, a Jet Ranger or an A-Star or something, you may wanna hire somebody, um, a trained engineer, that can look through the books, um, kind of look through all the component lives and everything, and determine whether that price is actually a, a, a reasonable price. Again, there's rarely a good deal, so if you guys are out there looking at old Jet Rangers or something, and you, you say, wow, this one's an incredible price, Mm, there's probably a reason for it. There, there probably is like a $200,000 turbine that's 10 hours away from being overhauled or needing to be overhauled. Um, the aircraft looks fantastic. It's got a shiny paint scheme and, and leather seats and stuff like that. Um, but when you look at the component sheet, there's some really high priced items that are coming due shortly. So um, these are th some things to consider. I'm gonna leave this video here. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope you found some value in it. Um, if you did, I would love it if you guys gave this video a thumbs up, if you would share it with somebody, and if you would subscribe to my channel. I wanna hear your guys' comments, your feedback. Are you guys currently Robinson owners? Are you looking to get into one? Do you know of somebody that wants to get into one? Or do you know of somebody, or are you yourself, um, the type of person that's saying, you know what, I, I'm, I'm interested in helicopters, I have no idea what I should purchase. Um, this hopefully would, would give you guys a little bit of value. Leave those in the comments below. Let me know where you, what camp you guys are in. Um, if you're owners, if you're not, if you purchased, or if you're looking at purchasing, uh, let's get that talk going down in the comments below. And, uh, and I think there'll be value for everybody in that because again, you guys might be searching for these questions. I might've answered some of them, but if you leave some comments below, um, there's a whole community of people out there that, that are watching these videos that are gonna be able to provide answers for you as well. So um, until next time, you guys, I will talk to you later. See ya.